I want to take the opportunity as we begin this uh, Wednesday night service. First of all, we want to thank each and every one for being at highest praise tonight. And also take the opportunity to thank those that are viewing us live at this moment. Um, if you're looking for a church home, uh, if you believe in the Bible and you're looking for a church that's going to not compromise the Bible but teach the Bible so that we can walk in victory and do it God's way, then uh, we'd love to have you. Amen. I want to, I just want to, we've been doing a series on power of Christ controlled thinking. And uh, each and every Wednesday we've been covering Philippians 4 8. And um, through each one that we've got to learn um, the power of um, our thoughts. Uh, in fact, all, of, all life is changed by the way we think. Um, every, every decision and everything we've made in life. Is, is, is we have to make a thought to make that decision, right? This thing right here is the biggest enemy that we have. I mean, because you can't do nothing elsewhere until it gets programmed up here. And as, as all of us well know, you know, um, if we live a life of thinking bad, wrong thinking, we grow up doing that. We, we bring it into adulthood. We, we, if we're used to making bad decisions and we grow up making bad decisions, we will make bad decisions as adults. So what I want to do is under, help you understand something. And, and, and as I read Philippians 4.8 to you again, we're gonna, uh, we covered purity last, we got down to purity last Wednesday. Um, we're going to move to the power of the, of the lovely changes us. And we're going to talk about that, the first one. But let's look at Philippians 4.8 again. And this is something you say, wow, uh, this one scripture, if you were to just th focus on these things, then you will stand a chance of controlling this thing that's destroying you. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You've heard this throughout this, this study, but the reason why we need to drive that point home, you don't need to know the whole Bible to know how to change your thinking. You just need the simple stuff. Because, um, trust me on this, I have tried so many times in, in life to overcome the attacks of Satan. Does anybody know what? Uh, anybody get attacked in the mind? <laughs> if your mind is working, if it wakes up in the morning, it's a constant battle. See, if you're looking for me to get holier than thou tonight so that I look like I'm better than what I am, it ain't happening. I'm going to shoot it to you just as straight as an arrow tonight because I want you to understand that um, we got to quit playing around with this mess we got to get real and understand so that and if i can tell you something that will help you and this is this if you don't constantly 100 percent of the time fight the mind satan will find a way in in a split second he will take your time where you're sitting back you might not be doing nothing you might have idle time and they always say the out of, the out of mind is the devil's workshop. And it, it, Satan is always looking for opportunity to slide in. You can be having a great day. You might be doing things great. And just one little incident. And all of a sudden Satan slips in. He'll use somebody most of the time to do his dirty work. So, you know, it, this is not about you um, not sinning. This is, this is not about, well, I, I've got to live this Christian life. No, this is a battle for your soul. See, because, listen, church, we can lay hands on and do all the stuff that the Bible requires, but until your mind gets right, you're going to lose the battle. There's probably more preachers, that, preachers in the pulpit right now that, that are losing the battle for their, for, because of their thinking. I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you honestly, but you know what the sad part about it is? is they think that the preacher is supposed to have it all together. He's a preacher. He's supposed to have No, I got news for you. He's the one that Satan's going to come at the worst. 
So the reason I, I do this study is because every day of my life, if I could have a dollar for every time that I've said this scripture, uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do you know why I say that out loud? How many of you remember what we first started with? I told you to try to do two things at one time. You can't do it. You can't do it. If I tell you to think, you think from one to ten and then do what I tell you to do and then talk to me, once you open your mouth to say something to me, you, for, you, you have to stop what? You have to stop that thinking going on. So what does that mean? Some people used to have a theory in some of our studies to say this. Well, you know, if the battle's in the mind, maybe I need to keep it in my mind. Listen, Satan's not God. He didn't create your mind, so he can't go in and mess it up. He just knocks at the door. So the only way to shut him down, and to prove my point, and I will move through this real fast, did Jesus, when he was tempted to Satan, if, 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 if it was just a mind thing, why did he speak it out loud to him? Why did he tell him out loud it's written? Because, see, Satan didn't create the mind. He can't get into mind unless we open the door for him. But here's another scenario. Satan, what you speak, either brings him in or runs him off. What you speak either invites him in or runs him off. So what do I do? Whenever And, and like I said, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've said it this week. Whenever I get this, Satan throws a thought at me. Uh-uh, I, I, I'm bringing that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Why do, I say, why do I say it out loud? Some people think I might be crazy. Because listen, I'm, I'm, he's not in me. He's against me. He's oppressing me. So if I don't speak it, he won't know how I'm responding. How many of you know if you fester a thought and, and you keep it inside of you, then you finally blow this little thing that was bothering you, that if you, how many of you, you know in your relationships, if, if something, something, something one of your spouses did bothered you, or your child bothered you, but you didn't say nothing, and you waited all day, and you festered, I used the word festered, I'm from the old school, you festered on that thing, that little old gnat, you festered on that thing until it became a hawk, then it became a buzzard, that thing just grew and grew, and then when that person come in, you blew, you ever done that? You know why? It's because, see, you didn't bring that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. See, if you bring a thought captive immediately to the obedience of Christ and speak it, it has to go. Doesn't mean he ain't going to come right back. That's why, that's why he said it's a battle. And, and when we go through it, it's, it's worth it. Because why? It's because I want to have control of this. I'm tired of Satan having control of it. I'm tired of having good days and then get beat down. Look, I, I, you got to be tired of, of thinking you're doing good and then Satan knocks you right off your feet. See, the reason Satan does this is because we're not bringing our mind under control. Satan is all about destruction. And... and in fact, he said, what sort of things are lovely? Let's look at the power of lovely, how that changes us. What does Paul mean by uh, things that are lovely? Well, he, Paul means that things that produce rest and peace. How many of us love peace? Praise glory to God. I, rest and peace. I, I don't know about you, but when I go home, I like for things to be calm. You know, working in the heat and air industry as long as years as I did, I dealt with stress all day long. When I come home, I was like... Let me just feel the peace. That's what Paul was talking about, those things that produce rest and peace. Thoughts that produce strife should be avoided. Let me say this. Things that produce stuff in your mind that bring you this stuff, you should, listen, you should avoid them. You should avoid them, church. Listen, if you're an alcoholic, don't go apply to ABC store. If you are a thief, don't go apply for Belt's job. Okay? Okay, if you're a recover, recovering drug addict, don't go get a job at, at, at the pharmacist. Right? You avoid things that's going to what? Tempt you to fail. See, 
And, uh, and I'll say this, because people listen. If you're on the internet right now, if you're watching anything but me, and you're watching a bunch of garbage, get off of it. Whatever's going to lead you down a path, it's better to cut it off. Because he says it's better to enter heaven with what? One eye missing? One, all, one hand missing? What does he mean? He says, look, you need to avoid things that is going to cause you to fall. And, and, and people say, well, you, no, you don't. Ha you can't avoid it. If you're around people that are going to bring you down, get rid of them. I had friends I had all my life. I mean, we, we drank so many years, but whenever I got Jesus and I said to Jesus and, and I met John, they were mad. What are you doing? What are you doing? I said, well, I, I've quit drinking. No, you can't. You can't do that. I said, yes, I can. I've got to. But here's the part that was the hardest. I had to separate myself from them. And then they never forgive me because, like, wow, man, I thought you were my friend. Friends stick it closer than a brother, but that's a Christian friend. Listen, if someone doesn't appreciate the change you're making for the better, you're better off not to be around them. If someone wants to pull you down, because even to this day, if I was to pick up the phone, yeah, let's go party, they'd be ready. Boom. Say, see, I avoid the situations that's going to cause me to have that stress, that, that strife. And, and when someone keeps aggravating me, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I end it. I said, look, this is causing me stress. And Satan will put people in your path, from your past, let me go on and tell you, to just stir up trouble. You think you got everything smoothed out? He'll throw something up at you you never thought you saw coming just to stir you up. Why? But you need to look at him and, and, and listen, this is a mind thing. You are forgiven. You need to tell that person or whoever, if someone attacks you, I'm forgiven. And I've been set free. So you have no more power over me. You follow this? See, that's a mind control. See, S Satan loves to, you know, I know y'all's past is not as bad as mine. Praise the Lord. But I have to say, look, I'm dead to that mess. No, you ain't. Yes, I am. In your eyes, I ain't. But in the one that counts, I am. And I happen to believe him rather than I do you. It's, it's your mind. You need to learn to avoid stuff that's going to cause that problem. So what can you find in others that is lovely? That's a question I want to ask you. See, you need to learn to find good in people. You need, it's easy to find faults. Are you looking for faults or fate? When we have love in us, we try to find the good in people. Guess what? If someone just flat out refuses to, to have anything good, the Bible says dust your feet off. Don't let them pull you back down. Don't let them drag you down. You, if you give it your best shot and they still are the way you are, wipe your feet off. But here's the thing you're supposed to do. We're supposed to um, try to find good in others so that we can reach them. You know, a lot of times when we're searching and, and we're looking for the lovely in people or the good in people, see, the problem is a lot of people, churches in, in general, um, they do more hypocritical looking than they do holiness looking. Um, we're supposed to be looking for the good in situations. See, God is pleased when we focus on things that unify the body of Christ. The reason why the churches is really just being destroyed is because there's no unity. People will, people will get mad and walk out of church in a second. I can't believe they said that to me today. I ain't never going back. I'm serious. God, I'm serious. I saw how you looked at me. Silliest mess I've ever seen in my life. I had one lady one time, and I hope she's listening. <laughs> she got mad at me because I didn't preach on love. You need to preach about love. I did. Hard love. Hard love. I did. But see, people are, are, are and, and that's the sad part about it is, 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 you know, people are not unified. The body of Christ is not supposed to be broken. You understand that? See, if our mind is broken... The body of Christ is broken. If your mind is messed up, we got a broken piece in the puzzle. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to unify you. And how am I going to unify you? By getting this thing right here back on the right thinking. And guess what? You can't do it just one hour a day. 
I'm telling you. If, if teachers only had just um, taught one hour a week to their children and expected them to learn something, they'd never get out of the first grade. They have to constantly, every day, every day, work on them, work on them, work on them, just like the daycares. You have to, Joan, she has to constantly work and work and work, work to, to build them, to, to, um, to teach them. You, you can't get that weight, that thinking, if you don't really focus on it. And um, we talked about the unity. It's always easier to be a part of a, a faction than to get into the action. What I mean by that? It's, it's, it's easy to always fit in and, and not be separated. Um, that's the, what's the problem. Is. See, the church needs to realize this when I say this. is It takes a lot of work to build unity in a church. It takes, a, it takes a lot of work for you to build unity in your temple. It's easy for you to mess up your temple. Anybody seen things and thought things you shouldn't have today? Don't nobody raise your hand. All of us, right? So what does that mean? That means that it takes a lot of work. Jesus said it never would be easy. He said, if, if, if people's going to hate you because they hated me, look what they've done to Jesus. They crucified him. So why do we don't realize that it's not going to be, whenever we're trying to straighten out that mind, who's going to want to tear you down? Does anybody know the answer to him? That's all he wants to do. And you know what scares me? I told you this in my prayer. The Bible says, in the latter days, even the elect will be deceived. Think about that just a second without nobody going to sleep. Even the elect is going to be deceived. So if you're fighting your mind with a, 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 little, a, a, a little bit of something, this ought to scare you. Satan's going to wipe the floor up with you. See, you, you, see, you say, well, why do, I, why do I focus on this? Because, see, my life's at stake. I know that if I don't get my mind lined up and keep it lined up and fight, 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 Satan will take me down. And I got news for you. That ought to scare you. It wasn't realizing. Does anybody want Satan to win? Does anybody want to be looking out one day and say, well, I wish I'd have got my mind right? You can it's not going to happen overnight, but you've got to decide and commit to doing it because your life's at stake. See, I, I, look, I want to live in victory. With whatever i got going on, I want to know what God says, but I want to stand on it. I want to believe it in my heart and my mind. I want to have that, that control so that Satan says, Well, it's over. You know you're not going to make it through this. That's a lie. Because that, that's a lie from Satan himself. But see, that's, that's when I make that statement. I bring that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. What does it mean when you bring something captive? That means you take it, you bring it captive to who? Christ. What does Christ do with it? Just don't belong here. Are you with me? Satan throws a thought at you. Man, I let a, I let a do this to that so-and-so. Uh -uh, I bring that thought captive. Come here, thought. And you bring it to who? Jesus Christ. He says, uh-uh, that don't belong in this temple. <laughs> See, whenever you start taking control of the thinking by letting Christ have control of your thinking, see, Jesus will clean out your mess. But you, it's a constantly everyday battle. Ever since the first surgery that I've had, I've, 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 made a, I've, I've just made a commitment to the Lord in a whole different realm where Jones says, I don't know about you. Because why? It's because, see, Satan started attacking my mind. The first surgery, okay, everything's good, but boy, he had me doubting. I know y'all don't doubt, right? Y'all saints. See, we don't doubt whenever we're going through something. But he said, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord told me, he said, Greg, the reason why you have these emotions going on inside of you is because you, 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 you've got the world's emotion, definition of emotions going on inside of you rather than mine. He said, if you had more me in you, than you did in the world, you wouldn't be going through these emotions. I said, so what are you trying to tell me? More of him, less of the world. And, and honestly, guys, I'm telling you, I have made it my commitment. And even though I get beat down and beat down and beat down and beat down, I still keep going to the Word of God more and more every day because, listen, there is power Everybody say power. power. 
There's power in Christ-controlled thinking. Because every demon from hell has to leave at the word of Jesus. At the word. Because the Bible, when Jesus says, come out of that man in the name of Jesus, every demon from hell had to hit the road and go take a swine trip. Right? Okay. Look, they even had asked permission to go jump in the swine. That's how much authority they had. Look, they couldn't even, look, they had no authority to go where they wanted to. Please let us go jump in them swine and go and commit suicide. So who had the authority? Everybody, Jesus had the authority. And, and, and Jesus is the word. So we have authority in the name of Christ. Well, why don't we have that authority? Because our mind is not locked into the authority. You have the authority. I love this. Satan, just like what that doctor called, uh-uh, in the name of Jesus, I'm, I, I, he's got it all taken care of. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. See, all this stuff that comes out, why am I saying it? To impress you? No, so that that demon that's coming after me can hear what I'm thinking. I want him to hear what I'm thinking because how does Satan attack you? Through the mind. So he don't know what I'm thinking until I tell him. So I don't mind telling him, Satan, you're a liar. You're going to hell, I ain't going with you. So see, whenever you speak stuff, you take authority. But here's where we got a misconception. If I don't get nothing else done tonight, if, if Kathy has to keep running this same thing for six months, it don't matter. But let me tell you something, church. Here's the, here's the deal. We have all got the wrong concept. We're afraid to stand up to Satan. We're afraid. Don't make him mad. Don't say too much. It's going to come back and hit you. See, that's a bunch of lies. Listen. Jesus has already went to hell. Defeated him. Took the keys. And come back. And he's already, he's already took care of this dude. Listen. Satan is defeated. There's one person that knows where he's going. He has, knows exactly where he's headed. So he has lost what? Power and control. But why is he destroying your mind? Because you give it to him. He is, listen, we all do need to make a declaration. And in fact, if you're not, if the, if the nation, United States, would make a declaration that my mind is going to be on Christ, and I'm going to accept what God says in my mind and nothing else, you'd see this world turn around. You'd see the church actually have church. But see, the problem of it is, is we're giving Satan way too many, much credit. The Bible says that it rains on the just and unjust. Does anybody know what that means? No, it's not going to rain on you. It means that good things and bad things happen to all of us. Okay, that's just like, that. Thank, you can thank Adam and Eve for that. Because sin brought that upon us. But listen, he says on the just and unjust, good and bad things is going to happen. So listen, when you say, well, uh, Satan, don't give him credit. He didn't do this to you. God is still on the throne. Circumstances happen. It's up to you whether you blame God or claim him. And it starts right here. Well, I, I reckon my, the reason I'm going through this, no, the reason why you're going through this is because you opened the door. Satan can't come in your house unless you let him in. Satan can't come in your mind. Listen, I didn't just wake up one day and say, I believe I'm going to be an alcoholic. I believe I'll do some drugs. I just believe I'll be just one immoral, sorry human being. I just think I'll just do it. No, I opened the doors. And you keep open doors, he'll keep coming in. And here's the sad part about churches teaching this. Here's the word they mess up. Satan, and look, whenever he, the Lord cleans your threshing floor, sweeps it clean, if it stays empty, you decide, someone, you decide to go back to where you came in because, see, what, let me explain this and break it down in my terms. Y'all know the story I'm telling you, right? Okay, where he cleaned the threshing floor. Okay, and seven more came in worse. See, what he's saying to you is, you, 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 you save me, Jesus. Uh, forgive me my sins. He's just, he's, fa he's just to forgive you, right? When you ask the Lord to forgive you, he does. Okay, you're with me. So what he says, I, I, to never remember it ever again, right? So does that mean it's clean? That means it's clean, wiped, slate clean. Guess what happens? You go out, continue to doing the same mess you've been doing. 
Somebody listen to me. You keep going out there and doing the same things you've been doing over and over again. You don't change your habits. You don't change nothing. And guess what? Satan's coming back. Well, I believe we'll... Uh, I believe I'll go back to my same old stuff, but you think it's going to be the same old stuff. Guess what? You ask Jesus to forgive you. He cleansed you of all unrighteousness, set you free. All of a sudden, you go back in that same path that you asked him to forgive you. You got seven demons worse than the ones you just got rid of. Next thing you know, you think you were a beer drinker. You become an alcoholic, a drug addict. You, you, are you, is somebody with me? See, the Bible's telling us what happens whenever we get satan out of something and we don't change the way we think they're waiting seven more is waiting i sure hope he don't open his bible up this week he come to the altar sunday i'm telling you what he put on a good show he cried and wet the carpet i ain't never seen so much tears and sling it's not in my life then then he said i hope he goes home and he goes home and the first thing he does is nothing satan's waiting as a roaring lion, and he's seeking. Okay, but if he went home, said, "Lord, I'm shutting down garbage on the television. I believe I'm going to start claiming the word of God. I'm going to. I'm just going to surround my mind with the word of God." Satan's going, "Oh man, he's he's doing the only thing that's going to keep me from coming back in his house." But see, we've heard this, and and and, but we, but we can't do it because we're too busy. Are you too busy to be saved? Are you too busy to keep Satan from destroying you? Are you too busy to have a mind like Christ so that you can live in victory in a messed up world? Boy, if you're too busy for that, we better regroup. Because let me tell you something. That one night, that one needle, that one drug, that one decision could change your life forever. And see, Satan is waiting. And listen. He is going to continue to come in. So when you ask the Lord to forgive us and, and he cleanses us, he, he is saying, you've got to get your mind right. See, that, that's where he finally got my attention. Greg, you know, you can say I'm sorry or ask forgiveness and I'll, I'll forgive you. He said, but your biggest problem is not your forgiveness. It's what you're doing after you're forgiven. And, and I, I finally realized that, that, I, that I, had to, um, I had to look through this and look at this Christ-controlled thinking about the, uh, Philippians 4, 8, and I had to take it serious. Man, I had to, I've got to get serious because Satan is serious about what? My destruction. Do you know what? Let's get real, guys. You know what your destruction is? Does anybody know what your destruction is? Satan holding your hand to hell. Somebody needs to, to realize that because if, you know, is there anybody in this room that just deliberately just wants to go to hell? <laughs> that's, that's a hard word to say, but guess what? If you don't control your mind, that's where he's going to carry you. See, and how will you do that? By the circumstances you live, by what by decisions you make. See, looking for the lovely restores power to the church and glorifies God. So I want to just cover this one more thing, and I'm stopping the power of believing things of good report changes us. Whatsoever things are of good report. See, every church has reporters, right? See, some are always reporting on things that are wrong. Wise, the good ones are always reporting on, on the blessings they see around them. You got some people that just love to report on negative. But he says, whatsoever things are of good report. I love it when people come up and tell me stuff. And, and I, I, everybody, we all go through stuff. But I know you got to have a blessing in there somewhere. I can find a blessing in anything. Even though I had to go through that stuff that day, I'm, I told you. Everywhere I went, I, I, I come across Christians. Now, was it fun going through that? Certain? No. Nobody likes to be cut on. But the thing about it was, is... What was the blessing in it? The blessing in it that God was in it and I trusted God and he got me through it. The, the, the blessing of it is you could be in a foreign country going through a scrap pile trying to find something to eat tonight. We could be like they, they're showing on one of, them, uh, one of my Christian program channels where when the girls turn 14, they're sold. They're sold. The parents sell their children 
and they, and they sell them into uh, sexual slavery. It's, 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 it's not a secret. It's, it shouldn't shock none of you. This is going on in our country. So you don't think that we don't have something to be thankful for? Well, my truck ain't running right. Well, thank God you got a truck. Like me, I hit my finger today when I was trying to put that aggravating sheet rod up. Thank God I had a finger to hit. You can find good in anything if your mind is on it. But I've seen some people that's got this mind. Well, I can't wait to see what else is going to happen. Come on. Well, the other shoe's going to drop any minute now. Or here's, some, here's one that say, well, with all this good stuff happening, something bad's bound to happen. Well, guess what? You just spoke it. Satan didn't know it until you spoke it. Now he knows what to work with. Can somebody get this? Satan don't know what's going on until you tell him. Mind. Satan is a created being. He, he is nothing more than what God created. So he's not over God because God created him. Somebody get this. If, if your mind is being destroyed, you're letting a defeated, weaker vessel come into your mind and defeat it rather than letting Almighty God come in and control your thinking. Well, Pastor Greg, okay, that sounds good, but um, um, what, what am I going to accomplish from this? You're going to accomplish victory. Because whenever enemy, you're going to have enemies come after you, but you're going to have authority. You're not going to walk around with your head dragging the ground. You're going to say, in the name of Jesus, I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. See, you take a power authority. See, when you start having the right thinking, I don't care what Satan does, and he's going to come after all of us. Okay, not just me. Every one of us. And when he does, all, all Christ is asking you to do is have Christ control thinking. What would Jesus think? What would he do? And then you can walk in victory. I got to share this with you because uh, and, 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 and I, I'm going to close with this. But um, I, John, Lee, even when I told John, I said, John, I had to call and tell you something. She was on the way away, home from work. And, and she just said, something's wrong with you. She says, you're laughing like this. Something's got to be wrong with you. I was just laughing. I just broke out and laughing, Crystal. I tell you, I, 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 you know, I've been fighting these hospital people because they, they approve something, then they don't approve it. Out of network, in network, out of network, don't know you, whatever. But it's, this is the funniest thing. I got a letter from one of the hospitals today, and you, you, I, I promise you this is the truth. They sent me back $568. The hospital sent me back 568 or $86. I started laughing. I said, isn't this the funniest thing? I've been worried to death. They've been worrying me to death. About this bill. Now they sending me money back. See let me tell you why this happened. See I refuse to allow. Them to control my thinking. Come on church. If we, all, if we will let God. You know what I tell me. God's got it covered. It is what it is. I'm not giving Satan the credit. No sir. But I'm going to give God the glory. I, I'm going to get. And, and I laughed. John said what are you laughing so hard about. I said isn't it funny. I said how God can move on a situation. I said, who ever heard of a hospital sending somebody money back? Come on, think about this just a minute. When's the last time you got $568 back from a hospital? And then last week they were sending you bills. Come on, church. It's all because of Christ-controlled thinking. See, I didn't let them say, oh, and go have a meltdown. No, I said, um, this is not my problem. God says, surrender. So if I'm getting, listen, you say, what's this got to do with power of Christ control thinking? Here's where I stop right on this mark. And Kathy, we'll do this for six weeks. It don't matter. Here's where, here's where Christ control thinking. I haven't sit around just because I had one surgery and I've got to go in another. I haven't sit down and been moping and gloping and grumbling and complaining. I've got my mind busy. That's why you've probably seen the church remodeled. I, 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 am, I am going. Because, see, you know, I'm keeping my mind. But most of all, let me tell you something. When I park myself in that truck, I turn on Jesus. 
okay, whether it's the music, whether it's the word, you don't believe me, go turn on my truck right now and you'll see what I'm talking about. I refuse to let anything Satan's got enter this mind. And when I go home, let me tell you, my, ask my wife. I turn it right on. You can clip on my program, and it goes right back up to my preaching programs and, and singing and, and anything that, that gives me what I need. Because, see, let me tell you why God is, is I do this. Because, see, I learned that if I keep my mind on Christ, Satan can't get in and give me these thoughts. So that's, see, that is proof. Because, see, I, I don't sit down and dwell, well, I got all these doctor bills. What in the world am I going to do? You can't do nothing. Except for the greatest thing is just give them to the Lord. We've talked about this several times. Look, and so what do I do? I keep walking. Whatever, whatever I get on, the, whatever news comes in, whatever the doctor said, you know, and, and, and please don't think I'm crazy. But when the doctor called this evening, right, you know, we were leaving and came here saying, okay, we need to ask you all these questions, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I was just as happy as a lark. He said, well, you know, that, like, it, I'm not in control. God is. God's going to take care of this. And when, whenever you put your faith to trust them, you get, listen, faith, praise. Listen, what's praise? Everybody do this. Praise is having joy, not when things is joyous. It's having joy whenever things is turned upside down. So, see, it, it, see the reason why the hospital had to send me money back, because, see, God's going to bless those that have the thinking of Christ. I know that just a... Tw so I refuse to let anybody tell me. Here's what the doctor said. Well, you, you know that thing is close to your vocal cord. And, you know, I, well, I said, mm, I'm a preacher. That's what first thing come out of John. Well, you know, he's a preacher. I said, John... Let him talk. He's not in charge. The greatest physician in the world is God. Who you think give him the knowledge? So see, if you if through this lesson and these studies, if I can get this, if I can get your mind locked in, good goodness gracious, I'm gonna tell you, you'll be out there. I, I know you don't do heat in there, but I, I I'd go out there for I, I I pray for heat and air conditioning systems. Lord bless this unit. In the name of Jesus. Look, I, I lay hands on my refrigerator, my oven. And I, look, I, I'm not kidding, guys, because I'm saying, I, look, I'm going to give God the glory, but I'm, I'm going to trust. Look, who do you think created a refrigerator? God. Who do you think done heat and air? God. So I'm just going to anoint it with God. I'm telling you guys, see, whenever you develop a mindset that people think you're crazy, what are you doing? Well, I'm praying over this air conditioning for, so it'll run before I crank it up. Mike can tell you, I look, look, before we start on that, Lord, let it work in the name of Jesus. Before we hit that switch. Of course, one time we didn't, and I blow my hand off. It's Mike's fault. I think so. Oh, pie, yow, and my black, my fingernails turned black. But I'm just picking. But what I'm saying is, get this thing lined up. Let's, let's, let's invite people to come out. Let's get them, that stinking thinking straightened out. Because if I can get your stinking thinking straightened out, you might start winning some battles you're losing. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word. If we just would believe it and, and absorb our mind in it, God, help us to realize that you created us for you, out of your image and likeness, but you also give us a mind for Christ. What does that mean? You give us a mind that we can absorb everything that Jesus absorbed while he was here on earth. And we have power and authority in the name of Jesus in our minds to do great and wondrous things if we just get it lined up. So let, I pray, Lord, give us a heart's desire tonight to, to, to grow closer to you through your word. Lord, I... I I, I love you, and I just want my heart to grow closer to you. And I want that, and I know the only way I can have that is, is that I grow closer in your word. And I pray that for everyone tonight. Lord, I, I'm tired of Satan getting the credit for so many things, and he don't deserve it. I'm ready to see people step out 
and start winning victories, overcoming whatever they're facing and live in victory. And I pray that they'll realize that this is the only way. You said you're the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh in the Father but by you. So you are the way, Lord. Your word's the way. Help us to do that. And Lord, we always lift up all that are lost, sick, and need out throughout this world. We pray for healing, deliverance, and restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all.